Hello and welcome to the news on NTA International. I'm Ayo DG. Mike Inde, first, the headlines. As U.S. Inauguration Day draws close, Biden team sets to unveil 10-day timetable to reverse Trump administration's gravest damages. Schools in Nigeria's capital put in place preventive measures as second wave of coronavirus surges. Plus, World Health Organization begins COVID-19 origin probe. The United States incoming Democrats Chief of Staff says President-elect Joe Biden's team plans to unveil 10-day timetable to reverse Trump administration's gravest damages. Justin Bemui has more on this development. The Democrats incoming Chief of Staff to U.S. President-elect Joe Biden says in his first days as U.S. President, Biden will take decisive action to address four overlapping and compounding crises facing the nation like COVID-19, the economy, climate change, and racial inequality. These issues will be addressed in his first 10 days in office. Incoming Chief of Staff Ron Klain wrote in a memo to senior staff. On the day of his inauguration, Biden will reverse Trump's Muslim ban and end restrictions on immigration from some Muslim-majority countries, rejoin the Paris Climate Accord, and ask the Department of Education to extend existing pause on student loan payments and interest for millions of Americans. He will also issue a mask mandate on federal property and interstate travel. Biden's incoming chief of staff, Ron Klain, said they are among roughly a dozen actions the president-elect will take on his first day in the White House. Meanwhile, all 50 U.S. states are on high alert to the possibility of violent armed protests as the inauguration of president-elect Joe Biden on Wednesday inches closer. Justin Bem Unyi. NTA News. To speak more on developments in the United States ahead of 20th January's inauguration is Dauda Danladi, former Nigerian ambassador to Pakistan. It's good to see you again and welcome to NTA this moment. Thank you very much. Let's start this way. The U.S. Capitol and all 50 states, as well as the District of Columbia, are on high alert ahead of Biden's inauguration for fears of possible violent protests. What's your take? Well, uh, the, uh, Joe Biden would be taking office with huge challenges. Uh, the, it is a country that is facing a deadly uh, corona pandemic, uh, a struggling economy, and a country that is sharply divided. What has happened was quite unfortunate uh, following the persistent denial of the election results, it has polarized uh, America to an extent that it led to the mob action that took place a few days ago, which has led to a historic impeachment of a president twice, and at the same time uh, has created further division even within the, the, the polity. Now, the challenges that uh, Joe Biden will be facing on the economic front uh, ranges from the fact that at the moment about 20 million Americans are out of job, uh, trillions of dollars are required as stimulus packages uh, to boost small uh, businesses and, at the same, uh, and, and major corporations. Now, going forward, it is not only uh, the American challenge that Joe Biden will face, but global economic paralysis. Because in the African continent, uh, the the United Nations Economic Commission projected that African countries will be losing or have lost about 65 billion US dollars and that the African countries will require a stimulus package for about 100 billion dollars uh, if they are to come out of the uh, challenges. Now on the foreign scene, I believe that Joe Biden will be faced with a lot of challenges because recently, as you know, uh, uh, the outgoing administration has listed uh, Cuba as, uh, uh, as a state sponsor of terrorism. Uh, they have equally 
uh, listed Yemen, uh, uh, as, uh, uh, they have designated Yemen as a tourist, uh, the Houthis in Yemen as a tourist uh, organization. And that will create further uh, uh, problems for Joe Biden because of the escalation and the rising uh, in global terrorism. Now, could these challenges, like you rightly mentioned, could they be the reason why U.S. President-elect Joe Biden says it will take decisive action uh, to address four key issues, especially uh, the COVID-19 economy, climate change, and also racial inequality? But despite all these, are they really feasible? Uh, there, there, there are going to be some challenges because, uh, you know, when you take an action, it requires some congressional approvals. Uh, for example, uh, Joe Biden will, work, will have to work very hard uh, to re-enter the Paris Accord. He may reverse the uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership that involves about two, uh, 12 countries, Canada, Australia, uh, and, uh, and Japan, uh, with a 40% global GDP. Again, Joe Biden may need to, and I think he will, uh, 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 reverse the court in funding to United Nations organizations like the World Health Organizations, uh, UNESCO, uh, the Human Rights uh, uh, Commission, uh, which uh, uh, Trump declined to, uh, to fund as a, uh, uh, based on uh, what they term uh, uh, bias towards Israel. Uh, I think uh, going forward, I see a situation where Joe Biden will, will, will provide the necessary funding to these organizations, which will impact positively on African countries. I see an administration that will respect the African countries, an administration that will pursue renegotiating trade deals to an extent that uh, the U.S. will actively participate and get engaged with the African continent vis-a-vis -vis the uh, new uh, continental African free trade area, uh, which is now being uh, implemented with uh, huge potentials. The uh, challenges or the uh, controversies between U.S. and China vis-a-vis -vis, uh, U.S. investment in Africa to the tune of about $266 billion. I believe that would uh, stimulate uh, Joe Biden's administration to put in place a robust uh, 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 formula or strategy uh, that will surpass what we presently have in AGOA. Uh, uh, program for African investment and development. Obviously, uh, the Trump administration, based on what we're hearing from the camp of President-elect Joe Biden, has done a lot of damage to international relations and, of course, diplomatic relations. But what do you think would be responsible if President-elect, talking about Joe Biden, is to address these particular challenges with the setting up of a 10-day timetable? Uh, well, I think uh, 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 the, the catch for Joe Biden is the fact that uh, 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 they, uh, they now hold the majority uh, in the U.S. Congress and majority in the Senate, which would make it much, much easier uh, for them to pass uh, resolutions, for them to pass bills that would uh, reposition U.S. Uh, to occupy the leadership position that it has lost. As you know, the outgoing administra administration pursued a policy of uh, an isolationist policy, actually, uh, to the detriment of a global cooperation. And I believe the outbreak of the pandemic is one uh, catch that uh, uh, negates uh, the leadership role that the U.S. has been playing uh, uh, in the world. If you remember, uh, during the Ebola outbreak, the U.S. was in the forefront. They dispatched scientists to Liberia, and they were able to nip uh, Ebola outbreak in the butt. So I believe that uh, uh, Joe Biden has an advantage because uh, they now control both the White House, uh, the, the White House, the Senate, and the House of Congress, and I think that will be a leverage that Joe Biden uh, will use to reverse most of the uh, uh, decisions that the outgoing administration has taken. Ambassador Dauda Danladi, Nigel Suma, top ambassador to Pakistan, would like to thank you for coming on NTA News International today. Thank you. Moving on, as the World Health Organization begins COVID-19 origin probe, United States releases fact sheets on Wuhan laboratory requiring scrutiny. Let's join Justin Ben Ui, who brings us details of all these and other stories trending on the global scene. 
As 13 international experts of the World Health Organization arrive in China to probe the origin of the coronavirus, the United States Department of State has released a fact sheet of the activity at the Wuhan Institute of Virology while maintaining its claims that the virus may have escaped the controversial Wuhan lab. The U.S. claims it has evidence that several researchers at the Wuhan Institute of Virology became sick in autumn of 2019, before the first identified case of the coronavirus outbreak, with symptoms consistent with both COVID-19 and common seasonal illnesses. In its fact sheet on the activity at the Wuhan lab, the U.S. said this raises questions about the credibility of Wuhan Institute of Virology's senior researchers' public claim that there was zero infection among the institute's staff and students of SARS-CoV-2 or SARS-related viruses. In the meantime, Russian officials have brushed off claims that Brazilian regulators rejected the use of Russia's vaccine, Sputnik V saying they had merely requested more information. The news comes in response to earlier reports that regulators in Brazil had blocked its use. The Russian Direct Investment Fund, RDIF, said in a statement that such requests from regulators are standard procedure and do not mean that a registration bid was rejected. From Africa Now, reports say Ugandan opposition candidate Bobby Wine says he will legally contest the results of the presidential election that saw incumbent President Yoweri Museveni announced the winner, asking his supporters to refrain from violence. Bobby Wine said this on Sunday via the Twitter account belonging to his National Unity Platform, NUP Party. Hours after the country's election commission said Museveni won the vote with 58.6% of the vote, while Bobby Wine secured just 34.8%. Justin Bemunyi, NTA News. Contact tracing has commenced at the Lagos State University College of Medicine as three of its students tested positive for COVID-19, leading the authority to immediately close all hostel facilities. Annie Daniels reports that the situation, however, did not affect activities at the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital. The confusion that followed the announcement that three students of the Lagos State University College of Medicine have tested positive for COVID-19 could be imagined. But on a visit to the college after the development, the environment was calm as the hostels have been vacated as ordered by the management. All the students have been asked to go home to isolate for 14 days so that if there's any one of them who is showing any symptoms of COVID-19, such persons can report to the university. A number, a phone number has been made available to all the students to call. The coordinator, Center for Information, Press and Public Relations, Lagos State University, Ademola Adekoya, said the decision was made to curtail the spread of the virus. The spokesperson said the college was temporarily shut down as students are expected back after observing the two weeks self-isolation. The university is already sensitizing students and the university community and the general public <coughs> that COVID-19 is not a death sentence. Anyone can have COVID-19. But what we need to do is to report to the appropriate quarters so that they can get appropriate treatment. Adekoya also debunks claims from various quarters that some of the college officials also tested positive for coronavirus, urging members of the public to please remain calm as the college is working assiduously to ensure the situation is brought under control. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. Similarly, as the second wave of coronavirus surges, some of the schools in the Federal Capital Territory are making preparations for school resumption. Hadiza Godwin Ibn reports that it is keenly anticipated, but it is being meticulously planned to beat the challenges posed by COVID-19. Learning has taken some unusual tradition. Soap, running water and other COVID-19 safety facilities have taken precedence over the usual school resumption 
and here at FCT schools, the reality cannot be more stark. Authorities in the FCT administration are assuring all stakeholders that all necessary facilities will be in place both at the primary and secondary school to ensure that when the gates go open for resumption again, it is safe. All that are needed uh, for the smooth running of uh, the educational system of FCT have been provided, um, ranging from um, expansion of uh, uh, the school structures, renovation of school structures, provision of uh, hand sanitizers and all non-pharmaceutical material. So uh, it was a moment that we learned and we learned very, very fast. So I think uh, we are prepared to face uh, perhaps any challenge that will come up arising from the second wave. Yes, well, what we have done, we have devised a strategy where we have shift arrangement uh, so in most of the populated schools where you have morning shift and afternoon shift. That will give you, of course, uh, more or less like, like um, an additional 50% uh, space opportunity arising from uh, the shift arrangement that we have uh, currently now. The premises of the University of Abuja is still a ghost town. No students in sight. When they do resume as scheduled, however, they will be greeted by this COVID-19 awareness signboard and a campus that gathered dust and leaves. At the Senate building, though, it is not yet business as usual, but there is enough activities to see the routine tax through. No official agreed to speak with us, but this hand-washing point says it all. At the University Center for Distance Learning in Area 3, the atmosphere is not different, but all this could change in a matter of days when the federal government sanctioned date for resumption kicks in. Hadiza Godwin Ebuni, NCA News. And you're watching the news on NTA International. Let's go for a break. When we return, more stories. Stay tuned. I am there now. Are you sure this will work? Has to. I can't be this guy's intro. Just keep your phone on so I can list him. Today we're going to be discussing sleep disorder. What is the medical term for sleepwalking? Sonambulism. Right. Get free Intel to Intel quotes and experience HD quality conversations every time. Intel. Live more. Glad you're still with us. The Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, Dr. Sani Gwarzu, has advised Nigerians that despite the discovery of COVID-19 vaccine, non Medical intervention remains the best option to prevent the disease. Dr. Guarzo, a former public health physician, gave this indication as he received 500 pieces of nose masks donated to the ministry by an indigenous firm. In appreciation for the donation, the permanent secretary described the gift as not just one in kind, but an appropriate gift that will save lives and promised that the ministry will promote production of local content and international trade. Moving on now, Kogi State Governor Yahya Bello stepped up efforts to mitigate effects of the current prevailing harsh economic realities on households and firms occasioned by fears of the second wave of COVID-19. Correspondent Francis Udojo reports that the introduction of training and sensitization programs in Lokoja, the Kogi State's capital, is one of such ventures. Efforts to remove Nigeria from the global macroeconomic stability within the last five years has continued to yield results. In early 2020, COVID-19 related issues forced lockdowns and restrictions across the globe. This resulted to inability of businesses to cover their recurrent costs, leading to unemployment, inflation, poverty, and other social economic issues. It was to salvage this trend that the federal government, through the support of the World Bank, set up the Nigeria COVID-19 Action Recovery and Economic Stimulus, NGCARES, to support states with 20 million US dollars each, of which Kogi State is set to benefit. This program is not going to be uh, executed using the usual 
financing uh, model, which is the YPF. We are using; they are now using program for results. Kogi State having flagged off its own care program with plans on continuous training and sensitization of stakeholders and beneficiaries on how to key in, has earmarked the sum of three billion naira as grant for the project. I stand to assure you that Kogi State is going to be a model for all the states. So the governor has planned to see how we can reflect back the economy so as it was before, so that the people of Kogi State can continue to do their business. Social Basic Science, Fadama, Small and Medium Scale Enterprise SME, and more are targeted result areas. From Lokaja, Francis Dojo, NTA News. The Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Isa Ali Pantami, has approved the setting up of a national identity number enrollment center at the Federal Ministry of Foreign Affairs in order to simplify the process of registration for diplomats. A statement by the Technical Assistant, Information Technology to the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Femi Adelui, indicates that the desk will be set up by Tuesday, 19th January 2021. The center, which has been set up based on the request of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Oyama, underscores the importance of the national identity number as it is mandatory for diplomats who will reside in Nigeria for a continuous period of two years or more. Meanwhile, it is also mandatory for all other lawful residents in the country, as stated in Section 16 of the National Identity Management Commission Act 2007. Now, the federal government, through the National Directorate of Employment, NDE, has kicked off the extended public works program of 774,000 jobs for youth in Taraba State. Zana Joseph Gambo reports. The extended special public works program of the federal government is designed to create 774,000 jobs across the country. The program is also aimed at creating transit jobs and providing sources of income to the poor and vulnerable members of the society to ameliorate the effect of COVID-19 pandemic. With the flag off of the program in Taraba State, 16,000 participants from the 16 local government areas are expected to be engaged in various community-specific public works activities. We engage in nation's youth in some important sectors of the economy. This strategy is intended to facilitate the creation of productive and inclusive societies in our nation. It is important that it strengthens the economic relationship between the Taraba State government under the leadership of capital, their institution, which are I therefore pray for more progress towards the successful implementation of this program. The sum of 460 million naira is to be committed to the success of the program in the state in which each beneficiary will receive 20,000 naira monthly stipend for three months. The impact of the monthly income of the participants on the economy of the state will be tremendous, thus reducing crimes and other vices. Our communities will receive a best stage through the activities of the participants as they will engage in various community strength environment, specific family work activities ranging from the drainage period and orchard maintenance and many others. The beneficiaries are full of gratitude to the federal government for the gesture. Stakeholders pledge partnership for the success of the program in the state. In Jalingo, Joseph Zanagambo, NTA News. Troops of Operation Turatake Bango in conjunction with the Air Task Force of Operation Lafia Doli have destroyed seven Boko Haram ASWAP terrorist gun trucks and decimated several of the terrorists when they attempted to attack troops' location at the outskirts of Marte and Marte local government area of Borono State. A statement by the Acting Director of Defense Media Operations, Brigadier General Bernard Onyoko, indicates that the troops laid ambush for the criminals based on credible information. They are still engaged in pursuit of the fleeing terrorists for further exploitation. Meanwhile, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tsukuru Yusuf Burutai has commended the troops, especially the Air Task Force of Operation Lafia Doli, 
for their heroic actions which resulted in the successes recorded when Boko Haram terrorists attacked troops' location in Marte Axis. The Chief of Army Staff urged the troops to maintain the efforts and expedite actions towards ensuring speedy and final defeat of Boko Haram and ISWAP terrorists in Nigeria. Let's also tell you that President Muhammad Buhari has warmly rejoiced with the former Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Chief Emeka Anyaku, on his 88th birthday, congratulating the seasoned diplomat for a life that keeps learning and growing in wisdom, knowledge, and experience. The President acknowledges the worthy contributions of Chief Anyoku to the development of the country and consequently projecting Nigeria as a great nation. He extols the statesmanship of Chief Anyoku in always counseling leaders and the citizenry alike and using his extensive network of international friends to support the country's efforts in deepening good governance, democracy and sustainable development. President Buhari prays that the Almighty God will strengthen Chief Anyoku in good health and grant him the grace for greater support to the nation he loves so much. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari has commiserated with family, friends and associates of former Minister of Commerce, Industry, Senator Jabril Martin Skouye, who died at the age of 78. The President condoles with Agoiwe community government and people of Ogun State over the passing of the legislator in the Third Republic and a Fourth Republic Minister of State Finance as well as the Minister of Commerce and Industry who had many years of experience from the banking sector. President Buhari believes Martin Skouye will be sorely missed for his insights on issues of development, particularly in tailoring budgets that reflect needs of the people and praise that the soul of the deceased rests in peace. Similarly, President Muhammad Buhari has condoled with the Ketebu family of Bayosa State over the passing of former Nigerian ambassador to Ireland, Dr. Bolere Ketebu. The president recalls that the deceased served the country creditably in several capacities, including President, National Council of Women's Societies, Secretary to Bayosa State's Government, and Member, House of Representatives. President Buhari prays that God will grant repose to the soul of the departed and comfort those left to Monha. Now let's move on to sports and tell you that 10-man Abia Warriors held to a one all draw against FC Ifani Uba on March Day 5 of the Nigeria Professional Football League, which are decided nationwide on Sunday. In other results, any by international beats Kano Pillars by two goals to one, with strikes from Iwala Anayo and Gabriel Orok before Fahad Usman scored in the 86th minute for some consolation for the Kano State-based team. Lobby Stars beat Dakara by two goals to one in Makudi. Ayaya Uzochuku's 49th minute strike earned Nasarawa United a lone goal victory over Katsina United, while in Akure, Sunshine Stars edged out Worry Wolves by the same scoreline. And that's the news on NTA International. I'm Ayo Digi, Mike Indy. Good evening.